Welcome back to Cabo San Lucas. We're living the dream out here. When we're not in the house playing poker or high intensity virtual reality games, we're going to amazing restaurants and enjoying delicious beverages as well as dinners and desserts. It's tough to beat this area. There are jalapeno and cheddar tamales in every single trash can in the city streets there for the taking. Cows share the roads with vehicles out here. Plus the views are absolutely stunning whether you're looking out at the ocean or if you're in the country. It's so tranquil that it really calms nerves and it makes it nearly impossible to get irrationally upset about the small things like taking bad beats when there are 22 left in a massive field tournament. Yes, we haven't dominated 10s versus 6s. Fuck! 6 on the flop, man. I just run fucking the worst. King or 10. Please, King or 10 one time. Fuck this. I did say nearly impossible. Good news is that there are lots of tournaments to be played on GG, including today's event, which is a $200 daily monster stack, 272 players entered for a chance to win a first place prize of $9,567. I late registered and immediately lost my first buy-in, then on my second entry we got lucky and doubled up after flopping a set of sevens versus pocket jiggities. There's no right way to play them. That pretty much catches you up to where we are now with ace three of hearts, good for top and bottom pair against a pre-flop raiser who bet flop, got called by me, and checked turn. I bet half pot, and the low jack check shoves. My cursor's already over the call button, so why not? I'm happy to see that we're up against ace-jack offsuit. We haven't dominated, but we still need to fade a queen, jack, or six. The river takes a little while to fully peel, but it's a seven. We win a big pot and stack our opponent. Adios, amigo. It's been real. A few minutes later, we get it all in pre-flop with ace-king versus pocket queens. There's a king on the flop puts us in the lead, but we still need to avoid nine spades and the remaining two queens, so we're only a 57% favorite. The turn safe for us, the river, is the five of diamonds. Add another player to the growing list of people that we're knocking out. You can see in the top left that we're currently fourth in chips. Here we've got pocket tens. The button shoves for about 12 and a half big blinds. The small blind, who's also short, calls for less. They're both gonna have fairly wide ranges, so we're happy to call for about 15% of our stack and a chance to get two more casualties closer to the money. The button has ace four offsuit. We'd like to see that. The small blind has ace queen suited, so we're 54% favorites to win. At least until the flop comes out and there's a queen, all of a sudden we're 9% favorites to win. The turn is another queen. The river's also no help. It's a six of diamonds. We lose, but still have a top 10 chip stack. It didn't do too much damage to us. Now we're dealt ace king offsuit again. Bolts to the button. He min raises. We're not gonna see a flop or two big blinds. I three bet. The big blind tank folds. The button flats, we're heads up. The flop is not great, it's 10-7-3 rainbow. It's gonna be much better for the calling range than it is for my three bet range. Betting small and checking are both okay options. I go for the check. The button doesn't wanna give me a free one, he bets small. I'm getting a good price and I don't like folding anyway. I call, the turn is a dream, it's the ace of hearts, we have top pair, top kicker. I check, the button checks back. We likely have the winner. The river is another 10. I'm not too concerned about it. The button probably would have bet bigger on the flop if he had a 10 to protect against overcards coming out. I don't want to check and have this get checked back. I bet half the pot. The button has a whole lot of nothing. He folds quickly. Good run out for us. We're coming back up the leaderboard. Next we have ace five offsuit in the small blind. The cutoff min raises. I have a hand that I don't love calling with out of position, but it seems too strong to fold. His range should be wide. I have decent card removal and we're getting close to the money. You can see in the top left that 44 places will get paid, and there are only 66 players left. I've got a big stack, so it's a nice situation for me to put pressure on some medium-sized stacks. We understand if they call a 3-bet, there's a good chance they'll be playing for all their chips at some point in the hand, and a possibility that they'll get knocked out without making the money. The big blind folds, and the cutoff immediately folds after. We get it through. We're 13 away from the money. When we pick up Jiggities and the hijack, the player on our right open jams for 12 big blinds. It's a great spot for us. We make the call. We're heads up. And the player has pocket seven, so we're a huge favorite. The flop comes queen six, deuce. We still have the lead. The turn is a five. We only need to fade a seven. The river is the king of hearts. We're wrecking people's worlds. That win propels us into fourth. Hand for hand begins because we're on the bubble. Two players need to get knocked out before we get a little something, you know, for the effort, you know. We've got ace, deuce, and diamonds in the hijack. It folds to us. There's a standard raise from this position. The button makes the call. We don't like to see that because now we're out of position. The small blind also calls. We go three ways of the flop. It's another 10-7-3 rainbow board. The small blind checks. Should be giving up on this because I'm against two opponents, but I don't. I fire for less than a third of the pot. My thinking is that it's gonna look pretty strong when I bet into two others. I can still have all sets and over pairs. 
but isn't seeing strength from me. Still has to worry about the small blind potentially check raising him, so he shouldn't be flatting with any weak holdings. Small blind doesn't have too large of a stack, may want to avoid marginal situations until we get into the money. The button calls, this is alarming for me and not going according to the plan at all. I'm really gonna give up on this hand now, I promise. Small blind folds, it's heads up. The turn is an ace. Forget about that empty promise that I just made you, we're back in business. Could still potentially be up against a set or even some better aces that floated light on the flop, so I check for pot control purposes. I wanna try and get to showdown without necessarily playing for stacks. The player bets one third pot. You certainly can't go anywhere for that price. I call. The river is a card that Norman Chad says never changes anything, but it does for Scott Blumstein and it does for us here. We've got a sneaky top and bottom pair. We're still losing to sets and all other two pair hands containing an ace. I check to induce a bluff from missed draws like 9-8 or missed clubs. This also keeps the pot manageable in case I'm beat. The button is not checking back. He fires for a pot sized bet. It's nearly half his stack. I'm not folding when I drill a river like this one. I immediately call. Before the cards are flipped over, I'm halfway expecting to see a set or ace 10 and halfway expecting to see a bluff. Unfortunately, it doesn't end up being a bluff. But fortunately, it's not a set or a better two pair either. The opponent has ace jack offsuit. We end up winning a massive pot for nearly 10 times starting stack. I'm completely perplexed by the sizing from the opponent. Maybe he was trying to get me to fold ace king or ace queen, or maybe he thought somehow I'd call with kings or queens. There's no way to know for sure. Wow, uh, crazy river, best run out ever. We are third in chips, playing hand for hand. That was the first hand after um, it was announced that we were on the bubble. So just one more person needs to get knocked out before we're in the money and then hopefully we can run deep. Moments later, it's announced that we're not gonna walk away empty handed. We're guaranteed 378, but that's for the scrubs. We're going after that first place money. We've got king six offsuit on the button. It's the very bottom of our opening range. I'm min raise. Small blind folds. The big blind defends with the short stack. The flop is jack five deuce with two hearts. The opponent checks. Again, I can have all the sets, over pairs, top pair hands, and big draws even though in this instance, I don't have any of those. I put out a C-bet just to be a bully. If we can ever get our opponent to fold anything, we'll be happy. The big blind calls. Then we get another great turn card. We have top pair. The big blind checks. He has almost exactly a pot size bet left in his stack. I consider jamming. and Set up at one third pot to keep him in there with all kinds of weak holdings. Probably could have sized it up more in case the opponent's on a draw of some sort. I just don't want to scare him off and he likely would have checked jam flop if he had a flush draw. Big blind tanks, then flats again, leaving himself with 28,000, the pot's 80,000. Jack of clubs comes out. At first, it doesn't seem like a great card, but again, I think the big blind would have shoved on the flop if he had a jack. He checks. I might check this back if the sacks were deep, but since I'm capped at losing a maximum of 28,000, I'm happy to get this all in. The opponent's getting nearly four to one on a call and is left utterly crippled if he folds. I imagine we can get called by some hands even as bad as a pair of fives. The player lets his cards go. I had no idea what we were up against. We get the win, then find ourselves in second place with 33 left and queen eight offsuit on the button. I'm in raise, the small blind folds, the big blind shoves, he only has seven big blinds total. I'm getting two to one on a call. Queen eight obviously isn't a great hand and if it was for more, I'd definitely fold, but I should have at least 33% equity against what he'll be shoving a tiny stack with in this set of circumstances. I call, it turns out that we're not crushed. He has a six offsuit. We actually have 41% equity, not a bad scenario. We don't make a pair on the flop, but it's not too bad. A nine will give us a straight. We can still hit either a queen or an eight to win as well. The turn is the deuce of spades, which is not good for us since we don't have a spade and he does. The river is the ace of diamonds. We get extremely unlucky and lose. I say that we get unlucky because I'm just gonna pretend like we got it in with kings. It's the same result either way. It really doesn't matter. Oh well. We slide down a few spots, then we see King Jack of Diamonds in the small blind. 27 players remain. The hijack opens at two big blinds. Still, everyone's relatively short. Two big blinds is a lot right now. Folds to me, I'm debating between calling and three betting. The problem with calling is that it creates the perfect scenario for the big blind to jam as a squeeze with 25 bigs. I don't want to get it in for that much at this point. If I call, the big blind could just flat, and I'd be up against two opponents out of position as well. I three bet to slightly more than 3x. My VPIP is 18, which should get me a lot of credit in my opponent's minds. The big blind folds. I'm the only player at the table who has a sack even close to the initial preflop raiser, so it could really cause some damage if he wants to go to battle. With only 25 left now, the hijack folds. I'm not mad about it. Our stack dwindles some. Before we pick up king seven offsuit in the big blind, the hijack min raises. This is a standard defend. We call, we're heads up out of position. The flop comes king three deuce with two diamonds. All right, all right, all right. I checked to the preflop raiser. He bets half pot. That's a big bet for this stage of the tournament. I don't love it, but I call. The 
turn is the eight of clubs. If we were ahead before, we should still be ahead. I check. The opponent bets half pot again. I don't see how I can fold just yet. I call, hoping for the seven of spades. The river is instead the nine of diamonds. If the hijack was bluffing with a flush draw, he just got there. I check. I don't think I can call a third barrel on the river if it's for a substantial amount. Luckily, the player checks back. I may have the winner, but I don't. The hijack has pocket aces. The third diamond may have saved us some money. Certainly scared the opponent from betting. I have ace two suited in this one and open from middle position. Cut off calls. We're heads up. The flop comes king seven six rainbow with a backdoor club draw with one over, and that's about it. I have lots of kings in my range, and every pot's important right now, so I take a stab at it, betting less than one third pot. Probably should just be check folding at this stage though. Cut off calls. You might do this with a wide range. If another club comes, I'm gonna fire again. If any other card comes, I'm gonna shut down. The turn is the four of clubs. We'll pick up a lot of equity. There are plenty of draws out there, so I size up and bet slightly more than 50% of the pot, like I would if I was trying to protect one of my value hands. This doesn't deter the cutoff. He calls. The river is not a club. It does give us a pair. I suppose it doesn't change much since if it was the three of diamonds, for instance, we'd still be beating all hands like 9 8 or queen jack of clubs. We're not far from some pay jumps, so I check and give up in my mind. The player checks back. We don't win this one. The cutoff has pocket eights. He turned a gut shot to go along with his middle pair. Perhaps if we jammed, we might have gotten him to fold. We live to see another day at least. We're down near the bottom in terms of chip stacks with 17 left. When we pick up king five offsuit in the big blind, the button opens. I defend. The flop comes jack 10 nine with two diamonds. Not particularly great for us. I check. The button checks back. I don't think that he could ever have a very strong hand here with this many draws on the board, unless he has something like king, queen, and diamonds and isn't afraid of any runouts. The turn is the seven of spades. This is a good spot for me to lead because I can have all kinds of eights. Since the button didn't bet flop, he probably won't have as many. Apparently, I'm a giant wuss and I check. The button checks again. I really don't know what I'm up against, but I assume it's something towards the weaker end of the spectrum. The river is a king. We make top pair. Any queen makes it straight, but I don't know what queen is going to have in his range once he checks back the flop. I put out a tiny bet of one fifth pot to squeak out some value from a hand like sixes, down to deuces, or some hands like ace 10 and ace nine. To my surprise, the button raises to 54,000. He's trying to rep a queen. Once again, I don't know if he'd play any hand containing a queen this way. Maybe he's reading my blocker bet for what it is, and he's playing back at me as a bluff, with something like ace four of spades, for instance. I can't fully make sense of it. I go with the hero call. The button has queen nine offsuit. Bottom pair and an open ender makes sense to check back on the flop. The turn made his hand significantly worse. He checked again there. The river gives him essentially the nuts and I level myself into paying him off. That's an embarrassing one for me. We're in 16th place out of 16 players. Nothing we've done has worked out lately. I'm not feeling nearly as confident anymore. We've got about five big blinds and uh, it's not looking good for us. We've got some big stacks on our left, actually the biggest stack on our left. So we're gonna have to make a move. See if we can run it up, maybe make a final table. Shortly after, we find two Broadway cards under the gun, and it's time to shove. It's always frightening to jam from this position since anyone behind us could wake up with a monster. Fold to the button. He's still mad about me three betting him earlier with King Jack of Diamonds from the small blind. He's not letting us off the hook. He reshoves. Hopefully, we're not completely dominated. Small blind and big blind both fold. It's heads up for my tournament life. Okay, we have two live cards. That's some good news. King or Jack? King or Jack? Yes! Good flop, no ace, no ace, no ace, no ace, no ace. Don't do this to me, this is the worst. All right, double up, it's big. Yes, Andrew. We get some life pumped into us, still we're short, and we don't have the luxury of being patient with blinds and annies rapidly increasing. If we want a shot at winning this, we have to continue to be aggressive. Folds to us, we have Jack-10 suited with eight big blinds, we shove, and immediately get called. We're behind, but at least we have two live cards again. All right, we got snap called. We're gonna need some luck. Ooh, good flop. No jack, no jack, no. Yes, no, no jack. Or, oh fuck, we're, yeah, we win. Big double up. I was so confused on what I was rooting for. Fuck, yes. Let's go. Now I'm, that shoots me into sixth place. There's 11 left. We've got a workable stack and made a pay jump. We don't make another one until the final table, which is nine-handed. Every single hand is absolutely crucial at the moment. We're dealt 10-9 offsuit in the big blind. We have a 17 big blind stack. The button min raises. This is another spot that we don't love. Consider jamming because I'm loco and look cabeza. Ultimately, I think better of it and defend. Flop comes king 9-5 with two diamonds. We have middle pair. Could be worse. I checked the pre-flop aggressor. 
He fires for one third pot. We've got some fight in us. We make the call. The turn is another king, which is actually a good card for us, making it less likely that we're up against one. I check, the button checks back. That's good news for us. The river is the three of clubs. I'm feeling confident that we're holding the winner. I bet one third pot. Let's see what happens. Please let us win this one. Call and lose, Mr. Lee. Call and lose. Don't raise this. Yes! Huge pot. Got the call with ace high. All of a sudden we're fifth in chips in good shape. A player gets knocked out, we're on the final table bubble and a pay jump bubble with pocket tens. Mr. Lee opens from under the gun. This is a situation in which I don't really know what I should be doing since we're five-handed. The opponent's opening from early position. It's really like the hijack though, but we're on the final table bubble with huge ICM implications. Should almost certainly be jamming for 24 big blinds and tens are such a strong hand. I end up calling because I'm kind of in shock that I made it this far. I don't want to mess it up. I also don't want not messing it up. It caused me to mess it up if that makes any sense. It's very difficult to make it this far in a tournament. And I'm now dealing with situations that I've almost never dealt with before. Small blind folds, big blind defends. We're going three ways to the flop. We just hit a set one time. Well, we don't, but we do get a pretty damn good flop for our hand. We make it both the hard way, big blind checks, Pre-flop aggressor fires for one third pot. More than happy to call here. The big blind folds immediately. The turn is a queen. It's not what we wanted to see. It's Mr. Lee's thinking. Pay attention to the top left. Look at how many players there are our left. It goes down from 10 to nine. We've officially made a pay jump and the final table. Mr. Lee continues to think about what he wants to do. Eventually, he puts out a bet of 76,000. It's another one third pot bet. My hand is extremely under ref, so I can't fold. Call again, hoping that I don't have to face a river jam. The river's a deuce. Doesn't change who the winner is. Mr. Lee's considering his options. It feels like an eternity for me waiting. Luckily, he slows down. Come on, let me win, let me win. Yes! Fuck yeah! Final table! Woo! Coming into the final table, uh, let's see. I'm not sure what shape I'm in. You can switch seats? What the hell is this? I'm confused by the switching seats option. I've never seen it featured before, but it's pretty cool. It definitely favors the larger stack since they pick their seats last. If we go to the lobby, it looks like I'm seventh in chips, but that's just because it hasn't updated the rankings after the last hand that I won with tens yet. If you look at the other players, I'm actually coming into the final table fourth in chips. The payout structure's in the middle. We're guaranteed at least $837, but we really want to ladder up and take down that top prize of almost 10K. After being the big stack early on and getting decimated and being last in chips with 16 left, couldn't be more excited to have made it this far. Final table time. We're on a break right now, but we're coming back and we're gonna be fourth in chips. Uh, not, sure, not exactly sure how many big blinds I have, but I just made a big turnaround. Things weren't really going well for me um, for a big period of time, but doubled up uh, a few times and, and now I'm in really good shape. So hopefully we can get some good cards and uh, Continue this journey. The very first hand of the final table, I'm dealt pocket eights in the big blind. I ended up getting a great seat to the left of the third largest stack. The other two largest stacks are across from me, so they won't be in the blinds when I'm opening with wider ranges from the button and cutoff. Under the gun, min raises. This is incredibly strong. Folds to me. I defend. We're heads up. And we absolutely smash the flop. We have middle set with big money on the line. I check to the pre flop aggressor. He doesn't disappoint me. He see bets for one third pot. Aside from the flush draw, there's not much to be concerned about. I flat, so I don't frighten the opponent. The turn is the four of spades. We still have the second nuts. I check again. Under the gun is thinking. Perhaps he has a king. Perhaps he's thinking that I'm weak and he can bluff me. He bets half the pot. A large portion of his stack is now invested in this hand. Little does he know that I've been laying in the weeds with a monster. Two flush draws and some straight draws out there. It's time to come down with a hammer. Let's see if he really has it. No snap. Oh, okay. All right, we'll take it. Wow. Big win. We're almost at a million. So, still in fourth place, I believe. But uh, yeah, we're doing great. Pocket sevens here. Okay. Low jack min raises. He has the largest stack by far. He's one of three people at the table who can knock me out. Ideally, some of these other stacks would get cleared out of the way before I start tangling with bang bang, but sevens is a strong hand. I call. Big blind folds, we're heads up, 
The flop is jack 10 8. We have a pair in a gutter, but truly really not that great of a flop for us with two clubs out there, and we're drawn to the low end of the straight. I check. It's a board that's going to connect with my range fairly hard, and I just flap from the small blind. The opponent knows this and checks back. Wow, that's a pretty good turn. We make bottom set on an extremely coordinated board. I'm not sure if he'll fire if I check to him, since he checked back the flop. I imagine that he would have bet some nines and some other flush draws. I take the initiative and bet one third pot. He thinks it over, then makes the call. I'm confident that we have the winner, especially since we didn't get raised. The river doesn't change anything. We choose a half pot sizing for value. Perhaps we can get called light by something like ace 10 or king 10. The low jack considers his options, then lets it go. Not a bad result. Okay, we make two sets in a row to start this final table. Fuck yes. Whew. This is when poker's the most fun, when every hand and every decision is important because there's a lot of money at stake. Here we find ourselves in an interesting spot with ace jack suited in the low jack. Player on our right opens from a relatively early position. He should be strong and he has me covered. Plus there are huge ICM implications. For all those reasons I flat. The button is a short stack and he jams. The initial preflop raise are re-jams. We have a fairly easy fold. We let it go so that the other two players can battle it out. Player on my right has pocket tens. The button has ace jack offsuit. It's a good thing we got out of there since there aren't many outs in the deck left for us. Pocket tens doesn't have to sweat too much with the run out. He stacks the button. It's the first casualty of the final table. He receives over 800 for ninth place. Now we're guaranteed at least 1135. You can see in the top left that my ICM value is currently over 4700. The next interesting spot that we get into is with ace three suited in the small blind. The hijack went all in with around 10 big blinds. You can do that with a wide range, including some king high, queen high, and jack high hands, even potentially worse suited hands, so I make the call as the big stack to go for the knockout. Obviously, I get bad news that we're up against the top of the opponent's range. The flop, turn, and river don't give us the winner, despite us hitting an ace. Not much changes, though. We're still in fourth place with over 30 big blinds. An orbit later, we have king four diamonds in the small blind. Bolds to us. Player on our left only has 12 big blinds in a stack. We have a hand that's too strong to fold. The only option is to shove it in the opponent's face. He calls, and surprisingly, we're ahead. The flop comes jack-10 deuce. He can no longer hit a king because that'll give our opponent the straight. He has all kinds of outs, and is actually a slight favorite. The turn is the ace of spades. He can't hit a queen anymore. The river it takes a long time for us to see, but eventually the three of diamonds is revealed. We win the pot, set our opponent packing, and make another pay jump. Yes! Woo! We've got the knockout. Our ICM value goes up to 4,900, and we're guaranteed at least 1,500, Good news doesn't end there though. We pick up a monster and raise it up. Pocket Kings under the gun, final table. If anyone wants to do something silly, it's fine with me. Shit, raise, fuck. This is an interesting year. Fuck, what do we do? He's got such a big stack. We're just gonna have to get this in, man. If he's got aces, he's got aces. It's gonna hurt. He's not snap shipping, so that's good news. It's gonna be a big sweat if he calls. All right, man. He might have aces here. We're just gonna have to get it in. He's got ace or jacks. Yep. GG. King ball once. Come on. This would be the sickest river ever. Ah. Good game, us. Fun run. 1500. <sighs> That's it. Uh, it wasn't meant to be, but. Really happy that we played. Got uh, my first real final table in an online tournament, so that was really fun. And that wasn't the biggest tournament that I'll be playing in the next couple weeks. So maybe I can, maybe I still have some run good for uh, some of those bigger ones. Luckily, it wouldn't be too long before we get another deep run in an event. Two hours later, Andrews heads up in a $50 tournament that had 345 entrants. They're playing for 3,000 and they're all in. Andrew has pocket fives against ace two suited. Oh, come on. Yes! Woo! 
There we go. Got him. Two final tables in the house, only a few hours apart, and a tournament victory. We've got some things to celebrate. It's been another great day in paradise. That's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons because it helps out the channel a ton. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comments section. I'm happy to get back to you. Andrew and I, we extended our trip out here in Mexico. So originally we were supposed to be out here for three weeks, but we're staying an extra four weeks now. So seven weeks total. We're firing in a ton of WSOP events on GG Poker and a bunch of side events. Andrew's firing in cash games too. I'm probably gonna hop in there at some point, but I'm mostly focused on tournaments. I've actually cashed in six WSOP events so far, and I feel like I'm running great. And it's by far the best summer I've ever had with these events. I think before 2020, I only had two caches in WSOP tournaments. So um, big turnaround for me. Last summer I went 0 for 8, and this summer I'm like 6 for 20 bullets or something. Uh, so pretty sweet, I've been studying a lot, I've been putting a lot of time into it. So uh, use the promo code MUGS if you're gonna fire in some bracelet events yourself. That'll get you $60 in tournament tickets with a minimum of a $20 deposit. So you can play with Andrew and me on there too. I wanna give a huge shout out to my buddy Kevin Colenzo. He final tabled two events, two WSOP events last week, which is awesome. He's been a buddy of mine for a long time. He's been on the vlog, so you might've seen him there. And uh, he's also watching my cat Marvin while I'm in Mexico, which I appreciate. He does uh, some one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you wanna take advantage of that, I'll have his email address here and in the description box below. Um, hit him up, it's $100 an hour per coaching session and he can help you out with uh, cash games and tournaments as well. All right guys, hope you're doing good. Good luck at the tables. I'll see you next time, stay safe.